Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. It's come to my attention recently that all YouTube prepping channels are really at their core about weapons. So I wanted to bring some weapons in here hey, so that we going? could... Hey, oh, yeah, hey how's yeah. it going? It's been a while, it's been a my while. My twin brother. So, yeah, me and some of the guys, we were putting together uh, kind of a, an organization to just help the community. Oh, what kind uh, of thing? You know, fill in needs that the community may yeah, have. What kind of needs? Uh, and we're asking everybody if they could maybe help participate sure. at the moment. We're trying to do a food drive. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of people who need food. And I've got some canned peaches right here. You want those? Oh, that's that's really generous of you. And you made these yourself. These, oh, they look delicious. Somebody, somebody's gonna really enjoy these. Somebody really needs these. Thank you. I'm very glad much. that you're doing so this. Important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is a great guy right here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Helping people out. So anyway, YouTube prepping channels primarily are about firearms. So I wanted to go over some of the finer points of this uh, rifle that I have right here. This is a Ruger SR-22 rifle. Hey, it's me again. How's oh, it going? What's up? Uh, oh, you're still doing this thing. Okay. Well, uh, well that free drive get through went this. spectacular. It was just really oh, well, wonderful. Oh, good. I'm we glad. so many people. And right now, we're trying to do a clothing drive. Oh. So I didn't know if you or any of your audience you know might what? have any clothing that could be donated. There are so many people out there who need it. Oh, oh, that's just, that is you too much. Oh, the coat <laughs> off of his back, ladies and gentlemen. That is, good on you. Good on you, sir. That no, no, is no just worries, wonderful. No worries at all. Thank you good so luck. much. This is going to go to someone who really yeah, needs it. Yeah, you too. Good luck. You have a wonderful day. All right. So if we can get through this. So this is a Ruger SR-22 rifle. Uh, you can see that I have the lock that passes right through here. This keeps it safe. So if it was ever stolen, somebody has to cut through the whole lock to get the, th uh, the thing functioning or firing. Uh, I also keep this in a locked safe uh, for added security. Hey, it's me again. Well, you know, all the fun drives okay. that we've done okay, so far. Okay, that's good. I am great. trying to. Uh, but to be honest, funds would actually be more helpful. It'd be more, a more efficient way of getting things to people who need them. So I was wondering at this point if there's any cash yeah, I, I guess so. You could spare okay. to to help those in the community who have so much less than we do. Uh, it's very important. Here you go. Oh, that's just that is very that is wonderful. That is very generous. Now, do you have any more? Maybe because uh, that's great. That's great. But we could help out so many you other people. Oh, oh, I. Sir, that is just, oh, that okay, is yeah. just, too, you know, actually, this is probably pretty appropriate. This is, this is just enough. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sure. Stand up guy here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So anyway, uh, I was talking about some of the safety features on here to make sure that this weapon is never, you know, misused or anything. There's a lock on here that passes right through the chamber. So this weapon cannot be fired with, sir, what? excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, it's come to the attention to well, a lot of our community members at this point that there are some safety concerns, kind of safety concerns? going around, specifically with, what? whoa, sir, okay, I need you to lower I'm not that pointing firearm at you. right now. Where did you get a pistol? Uh, yes, yeah, we've all been issued uh, pistols at this point just How for basic food drive safety go? and security. Do you use the money to buy guns? Oh, the, uh, the fun drive went great. Uh, I mean, you, you, know, you can never feed everyone. There's just always so many mouths to feed. Uh, but there was enough money left over for these pistols and, and, and whatnot. Uh, we also had okay. some uh, identifying rings. So uh, that worked out really great. Thank you very much for that. But at the moment, I need for you to just keep that okay. rifle it's lowered just, towards it's the ground. Not pointing at and anybody. Maybe even let's put it on the ground. I think that for what happens next, sir, you need to be What's disarmed. happening next? Yes, I need you to place okay, the rifle on the ground. Okay, on the ground. What's place? happening next? Okay. Okay. All right. So what's happening next, sir? Let me just take this into my possession at the moment. Uh, what's happening next, sir, is that we are going to be uh, transporting you I, uh, where do I and need to go? Uh, several of your audience members to FEMA camps. At the moment, uh, we are all heading to FEMA camps. You're going to a FEMA camp. 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 <laughs> Hey, 
YouTube. This is Practice Prepper. One of the biggest issues facing the preparedness community that I think a lot of people don't really want to talk about very much is the question of extreme rule of law. You know, we talk a lot about without rule of law. People prepare against the idea of, you know, gangs or marauders uh, that, you know, might become a problem uh, during a disaster. But the idea of extreme rule of law isn't one that we talk about a lot. And I think one of the reasons is that it is it's a very vexing problem because the adversary in that situation is just vastly better, more funded and bigger and stronger than any one individual. Uh, so it's not a video that I had been really jumping to make for a while because uh, you know, my own feel, my own thoughts on it were kind of hazy and vague, but a uh, Praxis Patreon uh, contributor suggested they wanted to hear uh, that topic, and as a Praxis contributor, I am at their their uh, beck and call to to, uh, to you know make videos uh, you know about various topics that people suggest on there. So. Uh, Extreme rule of law was suggested, so I really gave it some thought, and I think it's really coming into more public light now with the discussions around, uh, you know, arms control, uh, you know, limiting people's ability to have firearms, uh, and whatnot, and, uh, you know, it's floating out there, so I thought this would be a good time to talk about it, really. Um, first off, what I would say is that, you know, the, the gun control debate, while it is, you know, out there, I think if there is any tool for a nefarious politician to try to control the populace, taking away the weapons would be one way, but the debate itself is a way of controlling people because it is used to pit people against each other, neighbor against neighbor, me against you. You know, little differences in opinions or the reading of a line in the Bill of Rights, uh, you know, can really get people, instead of working together for their common interests, can get people working against each other. So. I would just say, if there were nefarious politicians that were trying to enslave the United States population, the debate itself <laughs> is a far, more, a far better way of controlling people than you know, actually physically trying to take people's guns away. Um, you know, and the deba debate itself is kind of silly in a way, because I think people talk about you know, the Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. Nuclear arms? You know, th does anyone think that the Founding Fathers meant any kinds of armaments, including nuclear weapons? No, nobody thinks that. At the same time, you know, people would say, well, all the Founding Fathers must have meant was muskets and, you know, cannons or <laughs> you know, whatever they had back then. Um, that's equally kind of silly. You know, they, these things, they have to kind of roll with the times. Things change over time. I, it's kind of funny, like the right wing is oftentimes the originalist when it comes to interpreting the Constitution. Uh, and, and the Bill of Rights, but uh, on on the uh, question of arms control, uh, they they have an evolutionary sort of like evolving constitution <laughs> sort of perspective on it. So people kind of jump their uh, interpretations of things based on you know whatever they want things to end up meaning. But um, anyway, I think that the, the debate itself is the, the the tool of control. Not you know taking the, the weapons away is not necessarily. Uh, even going to be as, 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 uh, as powerful as the, the debate is itself in controlling people, in dividing people. But that said, it does feel like there are a lot of uh, liberties that have been take, taken away from people, you know, over time. And it, it does feel like maybe things are moving in that direction. But I think there's a long way to go from there. And, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is. But before that, I would, talk, I would want to talk about, uh, you know, what would we do if there was an extreme, extreme rule of law situation, a police state? How would you deal with that? And to that, I would look to other disasters, fires, floods, things of that nature. With a flood, you can put up sandbags, you can do trenching, something like that. With a fire, uh, you know, like a forest fire, yeah, you know, you can clear brush so it doesn't get that close to your house. You can put sprinklers on your rooftop to try to keep it from spreading. But if either one of those gets bad enough, you kind of just have to leave. And I think that's kind of the same thing with extreme rule of law. If it gets bad enough, really all you can do is leave. Especially if you have a family, I think your first obligation is to keep your family safe. And I think really the best thing you can do is to leave that area where there is that danger and become a refugee. I know that kind of sucks. For, uh, we see people all over the world and being a refugee isn't really all that awesome. They don't get a lot of respect by a lot of people. I think that's dreadful. I think that they are, the, I think they are people that we should be reaching out, trying to help as opposed to like, you know, again, vilifying them, saying they're evil, you know, monsters, terrorists, whatever. Uh, I'm sure there are some that are horrible people, <laughs> but by and large, they're regular people and they're, you know, just like you and me, and you and me someday might become a refugee if there was an extreme rule of law situation and we felt we needed to leave. Um, 
I think that that's the only real course because, uh, you know, for someone who has a family, I, obviously there's the idea of stay and struggle against it and there's a nobility to that. Uh, but for people who have a family, again, I think your first right and ob uh, your first responsibility and obligation is to them. So I think you really need to leave uh, and, you know, to keep your family safe. If you want to go back, that's, up, that's on you. But I think you need to get your family out, get your family safe first. And if they are refugees, you probably got to stick with them because, like we said, the plight of refugees isn't awesome in this world. Um, so that is what I think would be the solution if it ever happened. But the bigger question is whether it is going to happen. And I think to, to figure that question out, what you really need to do is to try to parse out the intentions of politicians who are in power. You know, with the, uh, you know, the gun control debate and everything, a lot of people have the knee jerk reaction to say, you know, they want to just take away our guns and then throw us into FEMA camps and then I'll ga gas us all in their agenda 21 conspiracy to try to, you know, to kill all of us off and everything. There's a simplicity to that. Uh, there's a charm to that in a way, you know, it's like us against them. It's very simple. It's very easy to wrap your head around, you know, we good, they bad, you know, that kind of thinking. But uh, I don't think that's a very effective model for actually figuring out future events. And that's really the name of the game. You know, understanding what's going on right now isn't really all that critical to right now. It already happened. It just happened. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. Understanding right now is useful in figuring out what's going to happen next. Uh, so your models of what's happening now have to be good at predicting what's happening next. And I think, uh, you know, with the gun control debate and everything, I think the majority of people that are pushing that aren't nefarious monster, you know, tyrannical leaders who want to, you know, disarm the entire population and make, when the people fear the government, it's tyranny. When the government fears the people, it's, you know, it's freedom, you know, or liberty or whatever. Uh, you know, they don't want to flip that on its head and, you know, turn this into a police state. They, you know, by and large, actually think that, you know, dis disarming certain people or getting rid of certain firearms is going to make the world a safer place for us and our kids, and they're not doing it for an evil reason. Now, that said, I don't agree with that as an approach. I think that when you make something illegal, uh, you know, th there's always the, you know, the underground networks and everything, and I, especially for, for people who want to murder people, there's always another workaround. You know, we just saw in, in Texas, there's bombings, and uh, granted, you, you know, they didn't kill 17 people in five minutes with that, but there are all different ways of people exacting their horrible ideas. You know, guns are an enabler, uh, but they, you know, it's not the only game in town. And, uh, you know, even if they just got rid of, you know, quote unquote, assault weapons, which I, I was recently told is kind of a bogus term. It doesn't really mean that much of anything, uh, but, you know, uh, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> even if they, they got rid of that, there are all other types of weapons, you know, just a, Glock pistol can fire off a lot of shots in pretty rapid succession. So, um, again, I don't agree with that as an approach, but I don't think that they are a bunch of villainous monsters that are trying to, you know, take, again, take away all our weapons so they can put us in FEMA camps and gas us all. So what I think that people need to do is get a, a reasonable, accurate model for why people in power are doing what they're doing and to use that to try to figure out what's going to happen next. Because I don't think that people are trying to, you know, again, enact their Agenda 21 and kill all of us. If there was some sort of assault weapons curtailment or ban, I wouldn't immediately think next step FEMA camps, uh, at least with the people that are in power at the moment. Uh, again, there are lots of people in there that are Soci sociopathic, I'm sure, that work in government, but they're, the bulk of people that are working in there are good people that are trying to do good things, and uh, at the moment, I don't have a fear like that. But you have to keep your eye on it, keep your eye on the people that are doing what they're doing, and again, try to figure out why they're doing what they're doing, because the individual actions themselves, while problematic, while a waste of time, while you may not agree with it, might not be a sign of extreme rule of law around the corner, they're going to start rounding us up. It occurred to me while I was editing this piece that I missed kind of a major aspect of, of all of this, and that is the idea of a catalyzing event. Now, a catalyzing event is something that occurs that allows politicians to do something that they couldn't otherwise do. 9-11 is a great example of a catalyzing event. It allowed George, the George Bush administration to pass all sorts of laws, uh, you know, with, you know, secretly wiretapping people's phones and all these other sorts of things. Actually, a lot of that was done without, <laughs> without, without actually being a law. But you get the idea. People will accept certain things that they wouldn't accept 
you know, without this kind of catalyzing event. And that event can either be something actual or it can be something that is fabricated. Uh, and that's what a lot of the conspiracy theories around 9-11, you know, swirl around. And you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into, you know, any of those right now, but the idea is, is that there were people that wanted to do X, Y, and Z, and they said that they would need a catalyzing event such as a 9-11 to happen, and then a couple months later it happened and they did X, Y, and Z. So, uh, so these catalyzing events can either be things that just happen through happenstance or, you know, through the natural belligerency of different nations, you know, being a-holes at each other, or they can be the kind of things that are sort of staged. You know, the, the, the classic example is the Reichstag fire, you know, that, that uh, kicked Adolf Hitler into, you know, having real power and really, really being a game-changing event and everything. So uh, it can be anything like that. <clears throat> so what would I see as being potential catalyzing events, you know, over the next couple of years that could, you know, initiate something along those lines? Uh, I would see either, you know, the idea of an attack or a war could do that, you know, to a lesser degree, war, unless it, like, really gets hyped up or it goes nuclear or something like that. And I know that we're in a bunch of conflicts right now that, you know, that, that could go in that direction. I, I should mention, I know a lot of people are kind of starting to take their eye off of North Korea. They're like, oh, you know, Trump solved it because, you know, the North Korean says that they want to do, you know, they want talks. Um, but I, I would not take my eye off of that. The idea that the North Koreans say that they want to talk about things is, I mean, a lot of people are like saying, oh, Trump deserves credit for that because that's unprecedented. It's totally not unprecedented. That happens all the time. This is, you know, their repeated cycle where they, you know, they push the envelope, they say they want to have talks, they do some kind of talks, everyone declares victory, the news cycle goes on, and then they quietly start doing their, doing their thing again. So, uh, you know, I don't see any reason on the face of this to think that this isn't just the same thing over and over again. Uh, there's also the issue with, you know, you know, with Russia and Syria going on. Uh, it looked like a few days ago that Donald Trump was maybe backpedaling from that, but now he's forward pedaling again. I mean, it's, it's back and forth, back and forth. Keep your eye on that. But another one is even the simple idea of an economic collapse and the, the trade war that we're kind of dancing around, uh, starting with China, is definitely a place that could really cripple a lot of economic se sectors in the United States. By the way, if you find any of this offensive, because I know there are people out there that are going to think that it's offensive to say that anything that Donald Trump could go bad, uh, here's a video that you might like to see. Well, that was offensive. Are you one of the millions of Americans who think Praxis Prepper has just gone too far? Are you asking yourself how anyone with a different view on foreign policy could ever teach you anything about gardening or other survival skills? Praxis Prepper actually carries a gun? I can't listen to him. So I had to put on body armor and unsubscribe so my mind wouldn't be blown. Well, unsubscribing from Praxis Prepper has never been easier. In the past, unsubbing on YouTube was a nightmare. There were mail-in forms, messy waxes, not to mention those hard-to-clean blades, but no more. Now, unsubscribing to Praxis Prepper is as easy as the click of a button. Simply scroll down to the unsubscribe button, click it, and instantly you're back in a safe space. The man cans trash. I mean trash in other people's dumpsters. Just count me out. It's been two weeks since Black Panther came out and he hasn't said a thing. Unsubbed. Praxis ain't no prepper. He doesn't even do gear reviews. That's right. Your safe space is just one click away. Unsubscribe today. Okay, now that we're all done with that, I just want to show it again because it's funny, really. Um, uh, so yeah, I would keep uh, my eye on the idea of you know where the economy is going, you know, with these uh, with all these tariffs and everything, because uh, if people start uh, you know losing a lot of their income, they become riled up, they get angry, and that's an excuse to you know start imposing all sorts of additional rules because you know our own populations become a you know a threat to us because they're pissed that they can't feed their kids. So those would be the things to look for in terms of that a catalyzing event that could change things pretty rapidly. Okay, let's go back to the video. Start establishing accurate models that are, very, that are actually predictive of what people are going to do based on why they want to do things and, and take it from that standpoint. And if you see people that you honestly feel and accurately feel are looking to become the next Joseph Stalin, the next Adolf Hitler, then you can act on that information. But creating these Goldstein monsters that are just there so that you have something to hate. Uh, it's not very useful to you uh, at all, not really useful to anyone, just creates a lot of divisiveness and uh, doesn't make you very good at predicting the future. So that would be what I would say. If we get the extreme rule of law, leave, 
just a little bit before it happens. And the way you figure out when that just a little bit before it happens time frame is, is by watching politicians, seeing their actions, watching their moves, trying to figure out why they're doing what they're doing, and then you can predict their next move. That's it. I hope you find that helpful. I'm sure there's lots of people that have different, different opinions on this. My feeling on this is evolving over time. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Please share them below. I know people love reading the comments in here, and I will be very look, looking forward to reading your comments as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.